All right, so everybody that keeps asking about the Bobcat, here it is. Uh, putting a new head gasket in it. Got the head pretty cleaned up. I'm going to do a little bit more. Uh, I want to make sure this works because that is an expensive gasket. This guy right here. That, that little tiny thing is $230. So it's getting a nice coat of copper gasket adhesive to make sure it uh, sticks on there. Wind's coming the wrong way for that. Uh, but it's got a nice coating on it. I'm going to let it get tacky, put an air coating on it, set it on there. Let it get tacky again, and then set the head on it. Tighten it down, but not torque it down. Because uh, i got to get everything else on there first anyways. And that's going to take quite a while. Then I'm actually going to torque it down. And we'll see if that fixes the problems and if we got a good running bobcat after that. So I might film a little bit of putting it back together. We'll see. i uh, got to turn the Pandora down. Charlie Daniels is on there. Uh, don't want to get demonetized. But putting the intake manifold back on. Whoever engineered this either had way smaller hands than me. I dropped the nut. That, that's not good. I didn't hear it hit anything either. So. Yeah. Nope. Oh, we got a backup, I think. Make sure. I'm assuming the last guy dropped a nut too, because uh, that has to be down on the floor. Oh, I see it. I'm assuming the last guy had to replace this little nut too, because I found it. I found one up under the motor. I shook it loose out of whatever crevice it was sitting in. Whoever designed this, though, either had a lot smaller hands and arms than I do, or they just didn't intend anybody to work on it, which I thought back in 1980. They intended on you to work on your equipment, but I guess still compared to today, I can't imagine being in the engine bay replacing a head gasket on a new one. I got it, what I believe is all timed. I'll show you guys that. What, don't don't take my advice on anything because I don't know what I'm doing. Fair warning, no idea what I'm doing here. I just take stuff apart and put it back together and don't expect it to run. But somehow I'm hitting a coolant hose that's loose and spilling coolant all down my arm right now. I don't know why this does, oh, there it is. I was going to say this doesn't feel like it's getting any tighter, but it's getting tight now. I believe that's all the intake bolts. Can you guys see? So all the intakes on, I got to put the fuel pump back on. I shouldn't have to time anything for that, but... On the timing, there's a little dimple here, yellow paint, 
matches up with the yellow paint right there. I know it's not perfect because I spun it when I was getting the timing belt on a little bit. And then there's a pin. Hard to do. It's hard to show you guys anything one-handed. Oh, I can see it. Right there. And then there's a little yellow paint mark in the line on this that pulley. Uh, that, that lines up to show top dead center. And then there's a little mark here that would be going straight up along with this. And they're pretty much even. And then I got this slid back in. It's either correct or 180 out. I don't know which, but that's easy enough to pull back out and switch around. Got it tightened down. Uh, still got to torque the head down. I got it tight, but not torqued yet. I got to put the exhaust manifold back on. That's pretty easy. It's all right there. The hard one was the intake manifold, but I think I actually got all the bolts back in. It's going to be pretty hard to get the, or nuts back on, the studs. It's going to be pretty hard to get the fuel pump back on. we got to find those bolts. They're somewhere. Oh, I see them. I think they're those. I hope they're those. Uh, torque the head down. Put the spark plugs back on. Or plug wires back on. I never took the spark plugs out. Do an oil change because one of the cylinders was full of antifreeze. I'll show you the old gasket here. It's kind of in the dirt, but uh, you guys can see that ring's broken. It was leaking coolant into cylinder number two. Yeah, that's cylinder number two and leaking. Uh, compression in between uh, two and three and it's a little bit uh, split right there because and it was leaking a little bit of compression in between there but got the new one in have to make sure uh, this stud or this stud this stud and this stud all three of these were pretty loose which let that right there is where it was leaking into cylinder two, the coolant, and then this one and this one were loose, and it was letting compression leak between the two. It hadn't started letting uh, coolant leak in yet. It might have been leaking a little bit in, but it wasn't. It was burning whatever it was leaking in, but cylinder two was not even firing because it was. It had an inch of coolant in it when I pulled the head off. But it's going back together. We'll see if it runs. Like say, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I hate working on stuff, but necessary part of having old equipment that we can actually afford. So I'm going to put you guys down. I don't know. I might show you a little bit more of putting it back together or next thing will be, I'll be sitting in there cranking, yelling at it to start giving it a whole can of starting fluid. We'll see. Alright, I turned the music back down so that way I could talk to you guys and not get demonetized. Throw this manifold back on, hopefully. Like I say, this is the easier one to put on. Everything's out in the open. I'm just going to get them all hand started and then I can actually get a ratchet on most of them, I think. I might be missing a couple washers, but we'll figure that out. Might be missing a lot of washers because you know they disappear when you're taking them off. Can you guys see that? Yeah, you can't see much. I'll bring you up here. I gotta get some radiator hoses hooked back up. I already hooked to the hard one in the back up. I got the front one here to hook up. I gotta put the intake back on. Uh, yep, I've not a lot left to do, I don't think. I mean, if that's, if anything I did works, we will see. I have 
have some doubts. I should probably go find some more lock washers. I'm sure we have some in the barn somewhere. So I'll bring you guys. All right, back. I'm trying to do this right. I got brand new lock washers. I think I actually have all the bolts or nuts I need. They even look the exact right size. I mean, one might be metric and one might be standard. I don't know, but they're close enough. Oh, I gotta turn that music back down. Trying to get demonetized, I guess. All right, I might not have enough nuts. I might've lost some. Yep. Oh, wait, nope. I found that one down below. That'll be the one I need. Maybe I was the one that dropped it. I thought I actually caught all these. But, those are all, that one wants to cross thread. Okay, those are all hand started. And they are bigger than 12 millimeter. I'm pretty sure half this machine is made out of 12 millimeter, but not those. Those gotta be different. That's 13? There's 13 millimeter. Why? I don't know. Ask Bobcat, not me. While you're asking, I'm asking why their head gasket is $100 or $230. Because that's a little ridiculous. I know it's a specialty part, but head gaskets for my 2011 Duramax, both sides are going to be. 60 a piece, so $120. Alright, I'm sure you guys don't want to sit here and watch me tighten down a dozen bolts three clicks at a time. So, I'll bring you back. Okay, so. Head is torqued back down, belts are all on, I even put the shield back over the timing belt, uh, gotta slide this back in there, valve cover going on, I think I got everything else done, put that little vent hose back on there, I might have to pull the valve cover back off at some point. They had a little bit of RTV in the back there. It feels like it's sealed and the gaskets look good. I don't know if it was old and they just didn't peel it off, but I peeled it off. Figuring if it was, it was already kind of flaking off, so I'll put new RTV if it needs it. But, uh, I gotta hook up the spark plug wires. And then we'll be ready to crank it. I, I'm not saying it's going to start, but we will crank it. See what happens. Uh, 12 millimeter. Nope, that's 13. Uh, 9 sixteenths. Found a 12. It's going back together, so I'm going to turn you guys the camera off and turn my music back up because I'm missing out on some good songs. Okay, so it's all back together. I got it running. Uh, I didn't film much of that. Uh, distributor, I, I did not have it timed. I lined up the timing marks probably four times before I got it timed. I just kept having to pull this out and spin it. I had it, what I thought was 180 out, and I spun it, and then it backfired, so I put it back some, and then finally the last time, I'd, I don't know, I was 100 and 
63 degrees out or something. Yeah, I'm just making numbers up. I don't know you guys can hear the rain, but it's raining pretty good out right now. But I'll show you it run. I want to go out and uh, do some bobcat work with it. So give it a little throttle, pull the choke, and let's hope it runs. I got a hundred or one thousand four hundred forty seven point two hours on it uh it was i've put the point two since i got it running i know like 12 minutes i just wanted to heat cycle it a couple of times and now it's sad overnight so let's see if it's back up Project. Got to do a power steering pump in that box van, but runs pretty good. Well, I made it to a different barn. Uh, you can see I got some dirt there. That hole's filled in, and there was a big hole there. I got about ten bucket loads in, getting all the dirt from out there. <laughs> And I heard rain coming. I, I looked across the field. I could see the rain coming. So I just pulled right in here because I didn't want to be stuck out in that. So we're going to wait for this rain to die down and maybe go back at it. Probably go work on the box truck because it's supposed to rain pretty much the rest of the day.
hope you guys enjoyed this video of me working on the bobcat. Forgot to make an ending, so here's Rusty and Dolly. And as always, have a good one.